Good evening, Bethlehem and saints of God. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, or maybe even good night or whatever time you tune in to. Heads up for the weekend. And heads up for the weekend is where I, as the pastor of the Bethlehem Baptist Church, let you know what's going on this weekend at Bethlehem. But before I let you know, I always like to, in case someone is listening, um, because this is a Bethlehem forum, but we broadcast it throughout Facebook, Instagram, uh, podcasts, and I always like to make sure that we communicate uh, for those who are in the Pauls Valley, Garvin County area. And if you're looking for a church home, you've been praying for a church home, maybe you just got saved. Uh, whatever the reason is, you don't have a church home. We want to extend this personal invitation from the pastor of the Bethlehem Baptist Church. My name is Pastor Michael Eton, and we would love to see you this coming Sunday, this weekend, at Bethlehem at the 11 o'clock service. We have a one-hour service, so come on out, bring a family member or a friend in case you don't want to uh, come by yourself. Give me a call, visit our website, www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com. And on that first web page, you can drop me a note that comes to my personal email. You can give me your number. I will give you a call to make sure that you will be comfortable visiting us this coming Sunday at the 11 a.m. service. And we would love to see you in the service. We're located at 311 North Dunbar. Again, we're located at 311 North Dunbar, right in the heart of Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. You can visit our website just to get to know us at www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com. And once you get to know us, we always encourage you to click the Facebook tab, the Instagram tab, the Twitter tab, or follow or friend us. You'll be involved with what I call our cyber church family. Now, we'd love for you to be a part of that cyber church family, but ultimately, we want to see you right here. This behind me is the picture of our church right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. Um, so we just extend this personal invitation for you to join us. Heads up for the weekend. Heads up for the weekend, Bethlehem and saints of God tomorrow. We will be fasting and praying. I said tomorrow we'll be fasting and praying. Um, that is April the 1st. We'll be fasting and praying from um, uh, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., a 12-hour fast. And we are continue to fast and pray about our COVID times. Um, they believe it's going to be an outbreak this spring. Um, so we're just going to continue to fast and pray that God would deliver us. COVID-19, COVID-19 effects and COVID-19 variances. We we'll fast and pray for our church, for our city, for the counties that make up our great state of Oklahoma, as well as for our country. We encourage those saints of God who may be listening at the sound of my voice. And you're not disciples at the Bethlehem Baptist Church, but you're a part of the body of Christ. We want you to fast and pray with us as well. We want you to fast and pray. Uh, for what's going on there in uh, Ukraine, fasting and praying that God would stop. We see that it's been limited because that's what I believe that God answered our answers, our prayers. It's been limited for Russia, but we're praying for peace in Jesus' name, uh, that this war will stop. It has just been a horrible Insta, instance to happen where this nation, as the Bible says, nation will rise up against nation. And this is what we're seeing. But we're praying for peace because Christians are supposed to be salt and light of the earth. And salt preserves. And we're trying to preserve the earth in Jesus' name. Because if uh, the factors, as I've explained before, the China backs Russia and uh, Putin uh, shoots something. Uh, he's been close, I think 15 miles from Poland line. 
Then you have NATO, which is America. Then you have a world war. So don't sleep on this time of fasting and praying. Uh, when you have number one, number two, number three powers plus NATO involved, it could easily become a world war. So we're fasting and praying because God has called us to be salt and light of the earth. And uh, we are speaking out against the war to be light. And we're fasting and praying to be salt of the earth. And even as we've been fasting and praying, uh, we believe that uh, Brittany Griner is being used as a political ploy during this time. And she has been uh, in uh, prison. Like I said, we fasted and began to fast and pray for her. She was just off somewhere. We couldn't, nobody, officials of America could ever see her. But uh, after we started fasting and praying, uh, some officials have gotten to see her. We're going to fast and pray that God would completely deliver her as well as we were and have been reminded of these two gentlemen, uh, Trevor Reed and old brother Paul here, uh, who are there and we believe they've been set up. They were former Marines. They thought, at least with Paul's case, I think they thought that they were spies and maybe even with Trevor's case. Um, but we notice and and i've noticed that they are in a situation where america can't help them anymore or can't help and as i've said before it may be political ramifications why they can't help but i'm not a politician i'm a man of god i call it as i see it the war is wrong i believe we should be involved and right um so because of their political affiliations, they are not able to help at this time. So I believe these people need our help and we're going to fast and pray. The effectual prayer of a righteous man, the Bible says, availeth much. And I believe uh, that there's nothing impossible for our God. And I believe that he can deliver these guys. And the same way he delivered as we fast and prayed for the uh, for the missionaries in Haiti where gang kidnapped them. All of them were set free uh, as we fast and prayed as a nation. So we believe uh, that if we continue to fast and pray that these three can be released in Jesus' name. As we put this spotlight on fasting and praying, I'm encouraging you to do so. To fast and pray. Don't sleep on the power of fasting and praying, church and people of God. I think sometimes this holy thing called prayer, uh, people make it common. And in, in, in because maybe God doesn't answer when they want to hear it, they, they think that God is not listening. But the Bible says, ask, and it will be given. Seek, and you'll find. Knock, and it will be open to you. And, and if you look at it in the Greek, that's in the present indicative mode, which means to keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking. And that's what we're going to do on behalf of this war. That's what we're going to do on behalf of these people in prison. We're going to keep asking. We're going to push, pray until something happens in Jesus' name. Thank you, Brother Rick of the Concord Church. That's where I got that push from. Um, so. Uh, we're going to be fasting and praying as we put our spotlight on fasting and praying. And, and also, as we have been fasting and praying, I want to thank you for fasting and praying for my new book project, which was released today. And along with this video uh, online, I'm going to send out links where if you're interested uh, in getting this book, How to Overcome the Psalm of Loneliness, a look at loneliness through the book of Psalm. Uh, you can feel free to do that, but it's going to be online only. I'm not putting it in the pastor's text. I don't have enough space to put it in there. Uh, so if you'd like to get the, a hard copy of this book, uh, uh, also you can get a Kindle copy of this book and it'll be online at my Facebook page. The, fair, the first post on my Facebook page, it'll be up there where you can get it. It's not linked to my author's page yet, the Amazon author's page. It takes a few business days for it to get linked up on my Amazon, Amazon author's page. So you got to get the direct link 
at this site on the screen, which is uh, www.facebook.com backslash Pastor Michael Eton. The first post you can get if you'd like to pick up either a Kindle copy or a hardback copy of this book, How to Overcome uh, the, the Psalms of Loneliness. Also, there's a video up there I'd like you to see as well. But I want to thank you for fasting and praying because it, it was evident that God had has been answering our prayers in this regard. So I want to thank you for fasting, praying, continue to fast and pray for the book that God use it in the body of Christ. Even as I encourage you to pray for your passion projects. What is it you're trying to get uh, done in the body of Christ? Uh, how do you want God to use you to impact the body of Christ or to make disciples? Uh, we need to fast and pray. That's, that's the Christian's offense in praying. And most Christians don't have offense. They only have defense. And they are not a threat to the devil when they wake up. All they do is pray to defense as the devil comes against them. But being involved in ministry, using your gifts, talents, and abilities for the Lord, which should be your passion projects, should be what you'll be praying for about purpose as we fast and pray is the offense of the Christian faith. And we all were born for not just being on the defense, but being on the offense. We all have gifts, talents, and abilities that God wants to use in the body of Christ. So fast and pray that God will enable you to make an impact on the body of Christ and pre-Christian's life in Jesus' name. Heads up for the weekend. Heads up for the weekend. As always, Bethlehem, we always like to encourage your being prepared for uh, Sunday's uh, Zoom Sunday School. Or we're in the service now. Uh, so I want to encourage you to study your lesson. We're going to study under, or we continue to study under living life connected to Christ. We're under our fifth heading under that section. And this week's lesson has to do with a life of persecution. Now, this is real Christianity. You won't hear this kind of teaching on the television, but it is in the Bible. And as Christians, as we live out our faith, we will be persecuted in somehow, in some way. And you have to, as I was talking about all last week, in the Just Like That series, uh, we don't want you to be uninformed about what goes on because sometimes you'll think it's you or you think you're doing something wrong while you're going through persecution when it may be the direct opposite. You may be doing something right and you're going through persecution. So uh, we're going to talk about a life of persecution. We're going to be looking at the Bible verse of John 15, uh, verses 18 through 25. And uh, chapter 16, verses 1 through 4. And if you have Sunday school books, you can look this lesson and begin to read this lesson on page 62 of your Sunday school book. 62 of your Sunday school book. So I want you to get that and be ready for Sunday. And of course, Bethlehem, I want to tell you this, Bethlehem, I need to tell you this. I'm going to send the video codes out with this video. Now, I do this for a reason. As I tell you, on Sunday mornings, the pastors can be doing plenty of things. And sometimes, uh, as I'm preparing to head up for the church, uh, I may forget. That's why I send it on Thursday. And when it's less, less hectic, and if you say the codes on Thursday, you won't have to text me on Sunday if I forget and say, Pastor, you forgot to text the message, okay? <laughs> So put it somewhere, store it somewhere in your phones or on your computers, uh, uh, copy and paste it in a Word file on your computers. So there's notes on your phones where you can copy and paste it. So uh, Sunday at 10 o'clock, you'll be ready. Okay, now not to say that I'm not going to send it out Sunday, but I try to make these precautions so we can always be on one accord. So uh, do that. And, and what you can do tonight when you get the coast tonight, why don't you go ahead and fast forward it to your family and friends tonight as we try to grow our Sunday school through Zoom. Uh, fast it tonight to your family members and your friends. I mean, uh, uh, 
text it tonight to your uh, friends and families. So we believe in Sunday school at our church. This is the strongest arm of discipleship that we have. The Bible commands to make uh, disciples. Disciples are learners, are learners. And the only school we have in our church is Sunday school. Hello, somebody. And that's where you go to learn. I want you to study, do your homework, study, and be ready for Sunday school this coming Sunday. Also, this coming Sunday, we always like to make an appeal for those who have not been back in a while. Uh, we want you to know we're back in service. We want you to know that uh, it's a one-hour service. And usually, I try to stick to that time. I try to get us out. If, I'm, if, if, if we're past the time, it's not because I did not try. But if I look at that watch and I see that it's close to time, I will shut it down. One hour service. And we want to see you in that service this coming Sunday. It's a good time for our first time visitors to join us at 11 a.m. Uh, come as you are. You can come dressed the, the way you feel comfortable. And we want to see you in the service this coming Sunday at the 11 a.m. service. We want to see those who had not been back in a while. We want to see you back in the service in Jesus' name. Heads up for the weekend. Heads up for the weekend, Bethlehem. I shared on this week at Bethlehem about this new sermon series. I'm just so excited about as we enter or headed towards Easter we're going to be in a series entitled The Miracle Messiah. The Miracle Messiah, John says in John 20, 21 and 25, that uh, Jesus really did so many things that it, it, it couldn't be contained in the books. But Jesus did 37 miracles in the New Testament, 37 miracles. And we're going to see this miracle Messiah. And as I've said throughout this series, Jesus wasn't uh, doing these miracles to give uh, hard-hearted people a sign. He was doing these miracles to prove that he was the Messiah, the Son of God had shown up on the scene and there's nobody like him before, nobody like him afterwards. He set himself up as the Messiah. And the first message we're going to talk about is the miracle at Cana. And that's what I'm going to give a devotion about tonight. Um, and we're excited about that message. And these are some other messages. Uh, we're going to talk about the miracle of the century on next Sunday. And the Sunday after that is Easter Sunday, Sunday, April the 17th, 2022, the miracle of the Christ. We're going to talk about that Sunday. And right now, I want to invite those who would come out on Easter. See, more people will come out on Easter for some reason. Uh, I would like to think it's uh, because of Resurrection Sunday. But if you believe in the resurrected Christ, it, you won't have to come just one Sunday out of a year. Hello, somebody. But uh, we want to invite you to our service, Resurrection Sunday. It's a good time to come back because some haven't been back in a while. We want you to join us, invite your family members, invite your friends for Resurrection Sunday on April the 17th, 2022. Um, there are other messages in this series that we will preach. Uh, but for lack of time, I want to go ahead and get towards our devotion tonight. First message in the series tonight is the miracle at Cana, the miracle at Cana. And uh, let me read this, and then I just want to give a little brief devotional thought just to kind of wet your mouth, give you a taste of what uh, the word is going to be like on Sunday, and also encourage you to uh, do the skills that we learn in Loyalty Month, the skills of observation, the skills of interpretation, the skills of application, and also, we want you to pray over the text fervently um, that God can teach you something that could encourage you this week or that can uh, even rebuke you this week. I, you know, when I was growing up in the faith at uh, Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship, I, I had a saying, that word hurt so good. 
it was hurting me, but it was good for me. Sometimes uh, that's what we need. So we're praying for encouragement, for rebuking, for correcting in the word as you fervently pray over the text. <clears throat> so, but let me go ahead and read this uh, text and, and I'll have to give a brief devotional word tonight. Oh, uh, on the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there. And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. Uh, when the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, we have no more wine. Woman, why have you involved me? Jesus replied, my hour has not come yet. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stones of water jars. Uh, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial, ceremonial washing, each holding uh, from 20 to 30 gallons. Now, I'm going to stop there. I need you to study the whole context, but for lack of time, um, I'm going to talk about the miracle at uh, Cana, the miracle at Cana. This miracle uh, is on the backdrop of a wedding. And man, I love being involved in weddings, uh, being invited. I love to do, uh, perform the weddings. Last uh, marriage I, I was able to perform was in St. Thomas, uh, there in the Caribbean. And we just had such a, just a wonderful time there. And, and that's what the festivities of weddings is all about. And one thing we learn about this miracle is, uh, it's, it's, I call it the miracle of joy because it was uh, amongst the weddings. And it's always a, a wonderful experience. Every wedding I've been to, I've just loved it. Um, and Jesus and his disciples were there, but something odd happened at this wedding. I think it's odd. I didn't, as a man who uh, probably is not as hospitable as some of those of you are Bethlehem. Bethlehem is known to be a hospitable church, and they always are concerned about having enough. They always want to have enough. They don't ever want uh, any event that happened at the Bethlehem Baptist Church where they run out of anything, they always want enough. And, and, and a person like me is like, oh, you, you know, you should have came early <laughs> if you wanted to eat or if you wanted to drink. And I didn't understand the importance of this until we were, as a church, invited to another church uh, in another part of Oklahoma. And we were the guest church. I was preaching the sermon. And we got there and they had run out of food. And not only did they run out of food, but it was very hot in the church. So you got people who hadn't eaten and now they are hot in the church. And I learned the importance uh, at that instance uh, of not running out. And this is the same kind of context. They don't run out of wine. It the wedding, and they don't run out of wine, and this is an offense in some cultures. You, you, you don't run out. You can't run out. And the unique thing that happened here is, and I don't know how his mother knew to get Jesus involved, but it just it doesn't seem like this should be something that Jesus needs to be involved with. And that's why we try to tell you about prayer. Always involve Jesus in any and everything that you face in this life, even if it's something that you don't think Jesus should be involved in. Mary, hello somebody, gave birth to the Messiah and she had enough sense to get him involved in this situation. Always get Jesus involved in every situation of your life because you may be like me, ignorant of what God can do or what Jesus can do at a wedding. Hello, somebody. Always get God involved. 
and, 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 and this situation is very unique because his mother told them to do whatever he says, but Jesus said, it is not my time. This is another reason I love this text so much is that this was a miracle before time. Hello, somebody. Somebody always said that he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. In this case, uh, he is before time. Hello, somebody. He wasn't supposed to be working, but he, he got his mother, his mother got involved. And that's what happened when saints get involved with circumstances in our nation and our world. God may be hesitant to be involved, but when a righteous man and a righteous woman began to intercede on behalf of Brittany and on behalf of Travis and on behalf of Paul and on behalf of the Ukraine, uh, it might be uh, before God's time to do anything, but you say, do whatever God says to do. Hello, somebody. And that is the importance of intercession. Uh, oh, we as a church uh, must always be willing to intercede uh, in Jesus' name because perhaps uh, God will move uh, before time. Perhaps God will get involved where he wouldn't normally get involved. Uh, and you better learn to intercede on behalf uh, of your family, intercede on behalf uh, of your church church in the seed on behalf uh, of your country. That's what tomorrow is all about. Uh, oh, the intercession and asking God to get involved uh, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, this is just a little taste of what God is going to do on Sunday. We just learned uh, two things tonight. Uh, the importance of uh, asking Jesus to get involved in what you may not even understand that he could be involved in. Um, and Peter is a good illustration of that, that professional fisherman. And Jesus got involved after they were all night fishing and caught nothing. Jesus, once again, you would think he, he don't have nothing to do with fishing. And what does he know about fishing? How, what is he going to teach the great fishermen? And Jesus said, cast the net on the other side. Peter was like, we done did this all night long, Jesus. You, you stay over there and you be the preacher man and I'll be the fisher man. But he didn't know, but he was the Messiah. He, he wasn't just any other average, ordinary preacher man like Pastor Each. He was the Messiah and do what he says to do. Get him involved in places. Oh, businessman, you think Jesus can't, don't know your business? Oh, uh, uh, pastors, you think uh, that Jesus don't know your business? Uh, accountants, you think Jesus don't know your business? Uh, political leaders, you think Jesus don't know your business? He is God. Get him involved in everything. Uh, oh, the woman who's given her life over to be a housewife and to raise her children in the admonition of God. Don't you know that Jesus can be involved? Uh, Oh, with raising children, you better get him involved in everything because he is God. Oh, don't you know that Jesus know more about your body than your doctor? You better get him involved. Hello, somebody. And you better learn how to pray and intercede. In Jesus' name. Now, I'm really shutting it down. Now, you know, Baptists, they usually try to shut it down three times before they actually begin to shut it down. This is my second time. I'm stopping right here. I want to see you this coming Sunday in the 11 o'clock service where you can get this word for yourself, the miracle and Canaan. And this miracle can uh, impact your life and could change your life and this was not even a miracle uh, that you would call a miracle of necessity. This was a miracle. This was wine, which was joy. Um, and that's why I like that. And I'm preaching again. I got to shut it down. <laughs> but we want to invite you this coming Sunday. It's April the 3rd, uh, 2022 at 11 a.m. service. Come. And join us if you haven't been back in a while. We want to see you in the church as we are building God's kingdom. 
What did I call Bethlehem the other night? God's mighty fortress here in Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. And you're invited to be a part of God's army at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. And as always, Bethlehem, uh, we always like to say, heads up for the weekend. I want to challenge you, Bethlehem, to stay connected. Stay connected. Uh, stay connected to God's person. That's how we do that, through fervent prayer. We stay connected to his person. Uh, stay connected to God's precepts. Remember we taught you last month, living by the book. That's his precepts. And stay connected to God's people. That's us, the Bethlehem Baptist Church. You need to stay connected to us. And if you stay connected to all of those things, God is going to work and move in a mighty way in your life. So Bethlehem, stay connected. I want to thank you for listening to Heads Up for the Weekend. And may God bless you and keep you is my prayer.